Hi everyone. So today I'm really excited to bring to you one of the most requested videos. Um, if you guys watch me on or if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I share with you my morning routine and what I do to deepen my spiritual practice. So today I will be sharing with you uh, my favorite spiritual tools. But I want you to really keep in mind of the fact that you don't need to own anything, um, anything fancy in order for you to have a deep connection to your source, uh, to your practice. Um, but I'm just sharing with you things that has really helped me on the way. It's not necessary that you go out and buy any of these things. It's just that these things have uh, really helped my practice and also it excites me to talk about it with you. Um, and one more thing, none of these products are sponsored by anyone or any company. These are things that I've bought from my own money. So make sure that you know that this is no advertisement, but just an educational video um, that, I, that I want to share with you that might help you in the future if you want to deepen your practice furthermore. So the first tool that I want to share with you are crystals. Um, I've been using crystals since 2010, so almost for 10 years. And I was introduced to crystals by um, this amazing performance artist by the name of uh, Marina Abramovich. Um, she coaches people like Lady Gaga, Jay-Z, like, you know, the greatest names in the entertainment industry and also so many artists from all over the world. Um, so when it comes to crystals, crystals are basically living, breathing earth crust. Um, and each crystal, depending on what type of crystal it is, has different types of qualities and components to it. So depending on what you use, they can be used for different healing purposes. For an example, let's take the rose quartz. Um, this is a very common stone, but it's a very powerful stone that one can use to cultivate self-love, to receive and give love, and also to open up your heart center. If you guys know, there are seven chakras, there are seven um, energy centers that humans have, and rose quartz works really well to open up your heart center. So another stone that I really love is amethyst. Um, I've been using this stone for a very, very long time and um, it's great to relieve stress, to let go of anger, uh, to let go of addiction. It's a super powerful stone that I invite you to try out. Um, now the next stone is a very, very popular stone in Sri Lanka and all over the world because it's known to bring about um, financial abundance. It's, it's known to um, attract money. So this one is called citrine. Um, it's also great for your solar plexus, it's great for thyroid issues. So these crystals can be used in many ways. Certain people make crystal cocktails by putting um, you know, different stones into water, leaving it there to be charged for some time and then they drink it. If not, you can just hold on to it. You can wear jewelry with uh, the stones in it. You can just keep it under the pillow. Um, so many things that you can do, but I really invite you to do some research before you use it because crystals have to be charged, meaning um, certain crystals can absorb negative energy and if you don't charge it often enough, they can break or you can lose them. So what I do is, um, during poya days or during, during full moon days, I put my crystals in water and I keep it outside um, for the moon uh, light to charge it and to cleanse it. So that's one way of cleansing your crystals. So my next, I, th I think this is my favorite tool of all time. I'm crazy about smudging. So smudging is when you use a plant or a, a part of a plant to cleanse your environment and also cleanse yourself. There are different types of smudging tools. Um, this is cedar, uh, this is palo santo. There's another plant called sage, which I love, but I don't have it right now. So what you do is you basically burn. Let me just show you. So you need to burn the plant 
and then you need to use the smoke to cleanse your environment so like this so the smoke that comes out it smells amazing um, what I do is when I deep clean the house at least once a week or maybe twice a week I burn Palo Santo or sage or whatever it is and I walk around the house and I cleanse the energy It really helps with productivity if you're feeling like um, you're stagnant uh, Your home doesn't feel very flowy and open and if you feel like your energy is kind of stuck This stuff really 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 helps especially during um, during quarantine uh, everyone's feeling a little bit down and not really motivated. They don't feel like being productive. So what I personally do is I clean my house and then I burn some of these stuff and then I walk around. You can also do the same to cleanse yourself as well. Um, this stick is actually relatively new, which is why it's not burning so well. But um, you can just basically cleanse yourself like this and your loved ones. I do this on my partner, I do this on my pets, and it's incredible. So plants like uh, Palo Santo and sage and even cedar, these have been used for centuries in um, the Egyptian cultures, um, even uh, it's mentioned in the Bible, even in Sri Lanka, Sambrani and stuff like this, it has been used for, for many, many years and there are absolute benefits. It's, it's completely up to you to believe, but through my personal experience, I feel like these things really help. So smudging, I think, is my all-time favorite tool. This became quite popular in Sri Lanka due to a lot of like famous people using it, like politicians, actors. This is called a Vajra, right? And you've probably seen like leaders use it. People say that when you hold on to it, you attract people and you, um, you know, attract people's admiration. I just use this for meditation. Um, this is incredible because whenever I go into meditation, it connects me to that flow very fast. Um, of course, I meditate without this almost every single day, but on special nights like on a Poya day or during Navratri, I use this to meditate because I feel like it really gives you that deeper connection really, really fast. So this is called Vajra and this represents the unyielding power uh, of spirit. Okay, so the next tool that I'm about to show you, um, I was fortunate enough to get this at uh, a plant medicine ceremony, um, start of the year. This was made by an enlightened Tibetan monk, um, and this is called an etheric weaver. And this is amazing for your energy. This clears your energy so fast and so well. And I use this for meditation. Whenever I go for public speaking events, I tend to get slightly nervous. So I feel like whenever I use this and whenever I wear this, um, during these events, it really centers me and it really calms me down. So this is possibly my most valued item more than everything I own. Like I, I hold on to this with my dear life because I absolutely love it. So this is a clear quartz crystal and there are magnets on either side. And um, this wire you see is a copper wire. Okay, so uh, my next tool, this one is called the Japa Mala and people call this also uh, as the Rudraksha. This um, mala has 108 beads and 108 symbolizes spiritual completion. Um, and whenever you do chants, it could be Om, um, you know, any bead mantra, um, you can use this as a reference point to know exactly how much you're chanting. So I do this probably a couple of times a month and it is amazing to really cleanse your energy, like I said before. Um, chanting, I've been practicing since 2012, and I feel like if you're new to meditation and if you don't really know how to meditate, chanting is a great place to start because you can focus on the vibration of the sound and how it travels through the body, and that translates into a very deep meditation in itself. So another one of my favorite tools, of course, is essential oils. There are so many different types of essential oils in the market. Uh, my favorite is lavender because it's super calming. I just um, put a few drops on my wrists and a little bit over here and I breathe into it right before I go to bed and it really calms me down. Now this is a mix of a few oils and this I specifically use for my meditation practice. I just put a few drops on my palms and I just rub them together and take a deep breath. 
and it's super, super calming. Um, there is so much of um, scientific research out there which talks about how it can really benefit your health from digestion to stress relief and the list goes on. So I'm gonna link some videos and some content about essential oil and some scientific research done on it in the bio section as well. So sound plays a massive role when it comes to healing. There are different types of sound healings out there. There's uh, gong healing, there's um, Tibetan bowl healing. Um, I would love to have a bigger version of this, but this is what I have right now and I've had this for a very long time. Um, this is great to use before meditation or just to play this. You know, it, it vibrates such calm energy. And this in itself could be a meditation. You know, these are really amazing gateways to really get you into that state of meditation if you're new. Um, and I play this for my friends. Whenever I have little spiritual circles in my house, I play it. Um, it could be amazing if you can use it in your practice as well. But again, it's not a must. It's just a few things that I've really uh, fallen in love with along the way. So um, I'm gonna link um, a couple of stores and uh, a few places where you can go and purchase some of these things um, and I also want you to know that these are just my beliefs um, it, they don't have to be yours you don't have to agree with any of these things um, and also the statue that you see in the background was something made by my grandfather and gifted to me so it has massive sentimental value for me um, and it's not me pushing any form of religious belief onto your reality at all. Also, let me know if you like this type of content, if you want me to make more videos of this nature. And don't forget to share and subscribe to um, support my channel as well.